email 31, I had a question for section 3.6, number one. And the question here was, how do you solve an absolute value equation? And I want to focus in on one word. Let me write this phrase out. Absolute value equation. So the equation is the part I want to emphasize because that gets covered in section 3.6. That means we have that equal sign in our, our equation that's given to us. And I mentioned that because when we get to section 3.7, this is coming, all right? When you get to section 3.7, you're actually gonna look at the cases for less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, and you could also have done less than and greater than here. And so these will be called absolute value inequalities. And there will be different methods for solving absolute value equalities versus absolute value equations. You'll hear me frequently refer to this as case one. And then these other ones here, let me just shift colors so we can see it, we'll have case two and case three. All right, but when you have an absolute value symbol or an absolute value term and there's an equal sign attached to it, the first thing you wanna do is isolate the absolute value term. So when you have the absolute value term isolated, meaning it's all by itself on the left-hand side, or if you want, on the right-hand side of the equation, and you've got some expression over here, the rules are take whatever is in that absolute value symbol. So for here, it's A, all right? Let A equal that expression on the right side of the equal sign and set up another equation where that that term in, in between or that expression in the absolute value symbol, or in this case A, is equal to negative B as well. So you set up two equations. That's how you solve something with an absolute value equation. So set up two equations and solve both. Ooh, I'm gonna just get this in here, solve both. All right, so that's why you have me saying here form one equation by setting the expression inside the absolute value symbol equal to b and then form the second equation by setting that a equal to negative b and then solve each equation all right so when you get an absolute value equation you actually have two equations to solve instead of just one all right thanks so much everyone bye